Hello there and welcome to the channel. I'm Stephen Bunting and I'm a physiotherapist working in the northwest of England. For more information about me and all the other MSK conditions I've covered so far, check out the website physiomsk.com. Today's video tackles a very common foot condition called posterior tibial tendon dysfunction or PTTD for short. In adults, this is the most common cause of a flat foot and it's also one of the most common causes of pain on the inside of the ankle region. As with all my patient information videos, I will talk about this condition in three parts. One, what is PTTD? Two, why have I got it? And three, what can I do about it? I'd advise watching the whole thing in order as it will make more sense, but if you're short on time, then I will add timestamps so you can skip around. Okay, so what is PTTD? Well, essentially, it's a problem related to an important tendon called the tibialis posterior tendon, which is located on the inside of the ankle. The main job of the tibialis posterior tendon is to support the arch on the inside of the foot, otherwise known as the instep or the medial arch. This arch has an important role in walking and running as it helps with foot flexibility and also shock absorption and propulsion a normal medial arch is really quite an amazing structure as it allows the foot to be flexible and adapt to the different ground conditions when the foot is flat on the floor and then it tightens up and becomes rigid just at the point of toe off when the foot is propelling you forwards during walking or running. So basically it's constantly changing throughout the gait cycle to make your foot as efficient as possible at moving you forwards. And the particular role of the tibialis posterior tendon is to lift the arch just at that point of toe off which then locks the foot into a rigid lever ready to push you forwards. In PTTD the tibialis posterior tendon becomes weak and painful. In the early stages the symptoms are pain and swelling over the inside of the ankle just here and the pain is aggravated by walking or running. In the later stages, the tendon can become weak and degenerative to the point that it can no longer lift the arch up properly during the gait cycle. Eventually, this causes a collapse of the medial arch, which can be seen as a flat foot. We use a few tests to check the position of the foot and the strength of the tendon. One is the too many toes sign. If you put your phone on the floor and take a picture or video of your foot position from directly behind when standing, Normally, you should be able to see the little toe and maybe the one next door. If you can see more than two toes, then this indicates a flattened foot. The second test is a single leg heel raise. If you can do this with your good foot, but struggle on your affected foot due to pain or weakness, then this might indicate a weakness of the tendon. Okay, so that's what PTTD is. Now, let's move on to question two. Why have I got it? Well, this always comes down to a single issue, overloading of the tibialis posterior tendon, which essentially boils down to doing more walking or running than your foot can cope with at the time. At one end of the spectrum, you might be an athlete who has pushed your running distances too quickly and overloaded the tendon. Or you might be someone who's taken up running or hiking for the very first time, but you've increased your distances too quickly and not given enough time for your foot to adapt and strengthen. Or you might be someone who's changed jobs from something sedentary to something where you might be on your feet all day. Or you could be someone who just isn't used to long walks or runs, but you've suddenly decided to do something as a one-off, like a charity event, but you might not have done enough training and it's just been too much for your foot. Or you might be someone who has recovered from an illness where you might have been off your feet for a few months and have been too quick to get going again. Okay, so now we understand what PTTD is and why you might have developed it. Now let's discuss what can be done to help. What are the treatment options? Well, it might seem obvious, but an immediate reduction in the amount of walking or running is the single most effective way of reducing symptoms. We know that the cause of PTTD is an overloading of the tibialis posterior tendon. Well, in order to get it better, you have to reduce the load going through it. 
The tendon needs a period of relative rest in order to give it a chance to go through a normal healing process. But what is relative rest, I hear you say? Well, it isn't usually total rest from walking or running, but it is a general reduction in the activities that are causing the pain, whether that's standing, walking or running. And you have to reduce these activities to the degree where the pain starts to improve. This will be different for different people, but as a general rule, you should be reducing your weight-bearing activities until the pain settles down to a mild and manageable level while doing that activity. If, despite these reductions, you still get a lot of pain when walking or running and it fails to settle down by the next day, then you're still doing too much. And a word specifically for you runners out there. If you've tried reducing your distances and the pain still won't settle, then it may be that you have to stop running completely for a spell. And I know you hate being told this, but you won't be doing yourself any favours by pushing aggressively through the pain. You could always substitute running with cycling for a few weeks, and you can do pretty much anything in the gym, except the treadmill, so please be patient and hopefully your sacrifice will be rewarded further down the line. Now this reduction in weight bearing activities may take a bit of experimentation, but it really is vital that you stop aggravating the tendon or you're going to be fighting a losing battle. A step counter or a smartwatch can be a really helpful tool in giving you some feedback about how much time you're spending on your feet and you can then relate this to your symptoms in order to find out what you can manage and more importantly what is too much for you. Okay. The second most important thing is to support the medial arch with some insoles. This is also really important. A good insole will significantly reduce the load going through the tendon. You can buy off the shelf insoles and I'll put a link in the video description below to some that I can recommend. But a key test is to squeeze the arch itself and check that it's firm and doesn't collapse. If you can collapse the arch by just squeezing it with your fingers, then it won't maintain its shape when your full weight is through it. The firmer, the better. A better option though, is to go and see a podiatrist who will assess you and provide you with a bespoke pair of insoles tailored to your individual foot posture. And I say pair because insoles always come as a pair and you should wear them in both shoes, even though it's likely that you only have symptoms in one foot. This will keep you balanced. The type of footwear that you put them in is also vitally important. The best option is a hiking shoe or a trail shoe like this, or a specific running shoe. These tend to be a bit more supportive than a normal sports shoe. You could also use some well-fitted lace-up shoes like these, but avoid floppy fashion shoes, open-heeled or converse type shoes. When you get your shoe, remove the standard insole and replace it with your new one. Your foot might need a few days or weeks to get used to the new position, so start using it for just an hour or two a day at first, and then slowly increase this until you're using them all the time. Otherwise, you might find you get new aches and pains in your feet, as well as the PTTD pain. You're going to need to use these insoles until the problem has got fully better, and some people choose to continue using them for the long term in order to stop the problem from coming back again. The last early treatment to consider is the use of an anti-inflammatory. Not everyone will need this additional treatment, but if your tendon is swollen and very tender to touch, then it's likely that it's inflamed, something that's more common in the very early stages of the condition. So if you have symptoms of swelling along the tendon just here, which will also be very tender to touch and generally quite angry and irritable, then an anti-inflammatory can be really helpful in settling this down. This can either be a gel to rub into the area or a tablet like ibuprofen, both of which you can buy over the counter in most countries. Just remember that not everyone can take anti-inflammatories, so please check with a pharmacist or a prescriber first. If you do use them, then make sure you use it as it says on the packet at maximum dose, daily over at least three weeks. Taking them sporadically won't work. If the swelling doesn't settle down within a few weeks, or if you can't take anti-inflammatories, then a cortisone injection into the tendon sheath can be helpful. This is best done under ultrasound guidance, as accuracy is key to getting the best result. Of course, you're going to need to see a specialist clinician at this stage. In cases of persistent inflammation, 
A specialist may also recommend using something more supportive than an insole, such as a brace or an immobilisation boot, in order to rest a tendon as much as practically possible. OK, so the whole point of what we've discussed so far is to reduce pain and any swelling and therefore allow the tendon a period of rest so it can start to heal. We now have to be patient. How patient will be different for everyone, but we need to be sure the tendon has settled right down before we start to build up the strength again. It's usually going to take at least six weeks and sometimes three or four months before the swelling has gone and the pain has settled. Only then should you start to slowly increase your walking levels again or take your first tentative run. And this time you need to be really careful to increase your distances slowly over another six to 12 weeks at least. Over this time, it can also be helpful to start doing some progressive loading exercises for the tibialis posterior tendon. This will help to slowly increase its strength and resilience and make it less likely that the problem will start up again. I'll do a separate video to discuss and demonstrate a suitable exercise program, which I'll put up here, or I'll put a link in the description below when it's done. And that's pretty much it. It can be slow progress and therefore very frustrating, particularly for you keen runners who want to get back to running as soon as possible, but it really is worth being patient and listening to your body throughout this process. Be prepared to back off and rest a bit longer if you need to. It's really not worth being silly, pushing too hard and too fast and going all the way back to square one again. Okay, before we wrap things up, a final word if things fail to improve get checked out by a specialist clinician. There are circumstances where the tendon may have torn or even ruptured completely, or if you've had a flat foot for a long time, then secondary arthritis can sometimes develop in the foot and this can complicate matters and cause ongoing pain. In these cases, the insoles can still help, but it may be that you have to wear them for the long term in order to keep symptoms under control. An x-ray can check for arthritis and an MRI scan or an ultrasound scan can be helpful in checking the health of the tendon and to look for any tears or splits. A specialist will also be able to advise you if surgery may be required. OK, so that's it. Good luck, be patient and do get help if things fail to settle down with your own efforts. For more information, do check out the website. Thanks very much for watching and bye for now. Thank you.